What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our schedule preview and projected record series. The North Carolina Tar Heels are up next, looking back at last season, 8-5, eight 8-4 and five, eight and four in the regular season. Started off really well. This team was 6-0, and oh, coming off of a big win over Miami, and then it really fell apart for them. They lose to Virginia. They lose to Georgia Tech. The team that they seem to, to struggle to beat, and then... The final two games of the year, Clemson and NC State, they did beat Duke, so it wasn't all bad there to close out the season. But, uh, again, a team that was ranked pretty high at one point wind up having a, a very disappointing finish. So let's look at the schedule. And looking back at that schedule, they did play South Carolina, App State, and Minnesota in the non-conference. They played three quality opponents in the non-conference last season and beat them all and still finished uh, again, disappointing with with an 8-4 and four record in the regular season. Uh, and I tell you what, the non-conference schedule, it gets a lot easier for North Carolina this year. Here's the full schedule. Let's break it down. They do play Minnesota again. They play Charlotte. They play North Carolina Central and James Madison. Remember, James Madison lost their coach, had a lot of players transfer out. Don't really expect that to be a James Madison-type team that we've seen in the past. And so it's a perfect year to play them. Minnesota on the road will be tough. But overall, pretty easy non-conference schedule and definitely easier than last year. Uh, looking at the home schedule for them, the three non-conference games, and then they have Pittsburgh, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, and NC State. Um, you know, they're probably going to be favoring. It's Pitt, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest. NC State's going to be a tough one for sure. But a, a very realistic chance that this team could go 7-0 and at home. They could win all their home games. Again, NC State's going to be the toughest of these seven games. Then you look at the road schedule. There's Minnesota again. Duke lost their head coach. Don't expect them to be quite as good. Virginia, this is maybe a team on the rise. That could be a tricky game. Of course, Virginia beat them last year. They got Florida State on the road. That'll obviously be tough. And then Boston College um, shouldn't be horrible. Definitely a winnable game. So you see you know, a lot of winnable games here on the schedule for North Carolina. Looking at the schedule, they'll open up with Minnesota on the 29th. Then they'll play Charlotte on September 7th. Then NC State on the 14th. NC Central, I should say, on the 14th. James Madison on the 21st. And then they'll go on the road to face Duke on September 28th. And look, they, it's a while before they get their first bye week. They play Pitt on October 5th. Then Georgia Tech on the 12th. Then they get their first bye week. So they play, what, seven games before a bye week? And remember, everybody gets two bye weeks this year. Uh, so they have a, a pretty long stretch there of games without a bye week, uh, which could be tough early in the year, but could bode well for them later in the year. Remember last year, they struggled down the stretch. So that'll, that's something to watch. I mean, maybe that'll help them out. Uh, they get Virginia after that bye week on October 26th on the road, and then Florida State on the road on the 2nd so, of November. So back-to-back -back road games there. Wake Forest on November 16th after another bye week. So you've got a bye week, and then you've got back-to-back -back road games, and then another bye week. That's that's interesting there. Uh, Boston College on the 23rd, and close things out with NC State on the 30th. So again, the schedule, you know, that, that's going to be the toughest part is, is those two back-to-back -back games, Virginia and Florida State on the road. And I would say that's the toughest part of the schedule, but you get a bye week before those two games and after those two games, so maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. Uh, again, that, that's kind of strange the way that, that worked out on their schedule. So seven straight games, Without a bye week, but seven winnable games uh, for sure. And most of them at home. Only two road games in those first seven uh, against Duke and against Minnesota. All right, so let's get to the projections. First, let's look at some of the projections from last season. Uh, they were 8-4 and four again in the regular season. Regular season, Our projection had them at 8-4, so it was right on the money. My prediction was 9-3. and three. I was a little bit higher on this team. And again, you, you give them that win over Virginia, they would have gone 9-3. and three. Athlon had them an 8-4. The over-under was at 8.5. So 8-4, 9-3 seemed to be about where this team was projected last season. Let's see where they're projected this year. Here's the scale that we use. So if it's under 20 or over 80, those are pretty much guaranteed wins or losses. 20-29, to 71-80%. to 80%. Those are games where I think that you're going to have a pretty big favorite, double-digit favorite. 30-39, to 61-70 to 70 games where I think the spread will be closer to a touchdown, 6-7-8 points. And then your 50-50 games in the white. These are games that really... Uh, could go either way. So these are games that could go either way, and uh, a spread should be three, four, five points, something like that, or even less. So let's start with the easy wins. I'm going to put James Madison. I think Charlotte and NC Central definitely should be here. I'm putting James Madison in the green just because of, of the coaching change and everything there. If this was, if they had everybody coming back from last year, that would definitely not be in the green. But I'm going to put that one in the green. So three games that they should win in the non conference. And then we go to these games in the purple. Pittsburgh and Wake Forest. I think North Carolina should be favored 
in both of these games by about a touchdown. You know, both of these teams struggled last season, Pitt and Wake Forest, but traditionally they are are solid teams in the ACC. But I do think North Carolina is still a tier is still a tier above both of them. Plus, they get the home field advantage, so that is enough to put these games in the purple. And then uh, let's see, we've got one game, really one game where they're going to be a clear underdog. That's against Florida State on the road. Uh, they should be, uh, you know, probably. 13 point underdog something like that that's the one game you say they're probably not going to win they could you never know uh, but that's the one game you're going to say that they probably won't win and then the rest of the schedule i mean it's a lot of 50 50 games minnesota that one's a true toss-up in my opinion duke i'd probably favor north carolina but it's on the road georgia tech they've struggled to beat them but they get them at home this year they got a real shot to win that one virginia on the road beat them last year but you know, i think north carolina's got a good shot to win that one as well I think they'll be better than Boston College, but they do play them on the road. Again, I've got North Carolina in a tier above Virginia and Boston College and Duke and Minnesota, but because they play them on the road, that's why those are 50-50 games. And then NC State, probably going to favor the Wolfpack there, but that's that's very close to just being a, 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 a pick em game. So, uh, again, you've got a lot of games that could go either way, but only game where they're going to be a clear underdog is Florida State. That bodes really, really well. This is a very favorable schedule. And it means a pretty good projection for them. Eight and four is actually the projection. So same projection they had last year. And I think they've got a, a very good shot to do that again. Uh, we'll see if they can, you know, kind of get things going. They struggled so much down the stretch last year. So it's, it's hard to imagine this team being a top 25 type team. But if they can get it together, the roster is good enough. And the schedule definitely gives them a chance to be uh, in those playoff rankings at the end of the season. And who knows if they can win some close games. North Carolina might could even be in that playoff conversation, uh, it, although it might take them winning the ACC, which I don't know if I see that happening. But uh, they avoid Clemson. They avoid Miami. Um, it's, again, a pretty favorable schedule here. Avoid Louisville. Uh, Non-conference is not bad. And so, again, projection 8-4 and four for North Carolina. Do you guys agree or disagree? Give me your thoughts on this team down in the comments below.